Hi, greetings, welcome to Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 14, The Living Overlay System. And this is video two. And it's called hmm, Born to Be and Do. Born to be and do. Something comes into existence and it always has a purpose in which they need to follow through on. And besides the human being, for lots of different reasons, one in particular, all the flora and fauna you can think of, all the different species, of plants, animals, fish, birds, insects, crustaceans, just all of the different kinds. Do not have the same kind of choice a human being does. They're directly programmed for their function in such a way that they can't really break out of it. Unfortunately, unless at the hands of a human being. Another way is if for some reason a baby is left of a certain kind, maybe sheep left with some pigs, <laughs> the pigs sometimes will adopt that sheep or other animals have adopted someone else into their tribe, into their society. And then that animal who's been adopted in will carry some of the characteristics of how it was raised. Isn't that true for human beings? Right? If someone's from Asia and they grow up with people of, let's say, Western Caucasian influence, and, of course, we know that's very broad. That can be from anywhere, let's say, in Western Europe. And each one of those things are a different culture. Then that person will be flavored, so to speak. They won't lose their genetic, but their genetics will be influenced by being brought up in a certain environment and putting certain things into their whole blood system, mind, emotions, habitual life, very different than their ancestral life or their native life. It's very fascinating. And so, to make the distinction between human and animal clearer, because sometimes, um, at least to me in looking at life, the human being sometimes drifts from what it actually can be in fullness. And um, does things that might be more natural and fitting for certain types of animal life and not really totally fitting for a human being. And it's purpose life. You know, someone will say, oh, quit acting like an animal. So, let's take a look at something, shall we? I have a little something here. Let's look at bees. Okay? They have their own caste system. But they were born to be <laughs> and do that which, what, they were designed for. And they're designed to be pollinators. That's one of their functions, right? And, you know, they weren't designed to make honey for humans and bears and other creatures that might like that sweet stuff. That's their food.
But their whole process is to actually to be of greater good outside of their hive. Okay? So we have a queen. We have drones. We have workers. Those three, three basic categories in honeybees. The queen, female, is much bigger than the males. Now, there's only one queen. The queen bee. There's all these males. Now, I don't know how they're vying to get into who's going to be the one to mate with the queen. <laughs> um, I don't think they're drawing straws or anything like that. All right. Um, I'm not sure how that works. But after the mating process, which is very intense, and be an interesting thing to look up and see what's happening with that if you're interested. It's fascinating. The male dies. It's fulfilled its function. And it dies. Now, perhaps after a certain amount of time, the queen maybe needs to be impregnated again for another, you know, batch of bees. Maybe some of the other drones, if they haven't died yet. Sometimes they die before they get their chance. But there's um, a bounty of them. And they have one function, and that's to mate with the queen, and that's it. And they're even designed physically for that. <laughs> Read about it. <laughs> they can't really do anything with, you know, and getting the nectar happening. They can't sting, so they can't protect the hive. They're designed for one purpose. The workers, on the other hand, are designed for a variety of purposes, and I guess they have a way of dividing up the work. Incredible. So to say there's not intelligence at play, there certainly is, but it's intelligence that's already coming through a program through Mother Nature, as it exists on this planet, according to need. So, it's pretty incredible. The drone doesn't go, you know what, I've had, the, I've had it with the pressure of having to mate this queen. <laughs> I really want to be a worker. I want some other variety in my life. I just don't want to sit around till I die <laughs> never get a chance to perform. <laughs> Doesn't have the choice. Doesn't get jealous. All right? Nor do the workers think, hey, you know, I'm doing all them protecting everything and, you know, out going on long trips and coming back and going to this flower and that one and coming back. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind a chance uh, mating. <laughs> No, it's clear. There's no fighting or competition over I want to be something else. Great example. They don't have choice of what they are to be something different. Now, what about the human being? There's that word be again, but it's in a different context. Human being. Well, look, it's over. let's look at overlay one. One of the words for overlay one is robotic automatic system. And it's involuntary, right? You didn't have to remember to beat your heart this morning, blink your eyes, do any of that. It's done for you. So that's involuntary. And so the human is the form, okay? And so this is the vehicle. 
vehicle needs a driver. All right. So now we have overlay two, which more gets into the driver. And it's really our mind and mentality as the driver, but it's called skill and choice. And that's voluntary. After things like learning how to ride a bike that doesn't seem very natural, and we have to keep really, really thinking to ride the bike because it hasn't been habitualized. Once it's habitualized, it can almost become unconscious, right? Don't have to keep thinking about how to hold the handlebars or, you know, how to make the bike stop. It's habitualized. So it actually gets informed by the driver to print the involuntary systems to work for it, for its needs, in this case, riding a bike. And before that, learning how to walk. And then it becomes second nature. But it's still part of the involuntary systems at that point. Automatic, robotic, involuntary systems that is activated in us through our voluntary, deliberate, repetitive action and thought. Now, overlay three. That's the being. That's the being. And that is the essence. So where it's all leading is to the essence. That's the destination. Okay? And it's really the content, the highest part of the human being, the essence. And the overlay system itself is called unit integration and in art, which is integrated our life in such a way that our involuntary system is working to us and our second nature as a voluntary system that's programmed our involuntary systems to work for us, right? And it's really about unity and wholeness at that point. There's not a division between what our mind wants and what our heart wants, emotions. Everything's unified towards purpose. And the human being gets into a lot of problems when our heart and mind are not unified. Or our automatic robotic systems won't catch on to what we voluntarily are training them to be. So training is very important for the robotic automatic systems because that's what we're doing. We're training it like we're training a dog. And the trainer, the driver, gets more and more experienced as they build up a relationship with the robotic automatic system. You know, they so oftentimes think, well, everyone, probably a musician listening to this, you want to do something a certain way, but your body won't let you. So you have to come to an agreement. Look, body, I really want to do it this way. How can I say something similar, but in a way that you can actually do? And this is the importance of the can-do point. And the more command and where you find where you do have control, then to elaborate and develop greater spectrum of expression within your can-do point, of course, will give you more choice. But first, you're going to have to develop skill in developing versatility. Okay? But even with a little bit, you can do some things according to your particular level of development. 
fascinating topic, but one we all have to deal with, right? <laughs> all the time. So we have habit life, habits, they become unconscious, all right? That's why you can, you know, whistle, chew gum, um, you know, go like this and ride your bike with no hands, you know? You can multitask all these different things. Uh, awareness of the fact that we have habits, that we're not thinking about what we're doing, is really one of the first steps to being conscious, to be more conscious. To have that growing awareness that will grow into greater and greater discernment meaning the ability to take advantage of the things we actually can see the differences in, compare them, see the values of each and their uniquenesses, and start to understand them and how they work. So it's really the greater discernment is growing um, our awareness to the point where we can detect increasingly more subtle levels. And the more subtle we can get at seeing where things are, the more we can get to the cause. Now, <laughs> you can see from that, how do we get to that point? Well, what is practice? Practice is the repetitive, regular, consistent actions that we do either unconsciously or consciously. And to have this awareness going on as a regular part of our practice is going to make it much better. Now I hear some of you saying, well, too much analytic thought, you know, is going to be, you know, paralyzing, right? Analysis leads to paralysis or overanalysis. That depends on how you are looking at it. At a certain point, you need to trust your robotic automatic system. And if you haven't learned certain habits fast enough, ask yourself this question. Are you taking enough time to develop the habits that you want? To develop a breathing, a way of breathing for you that feels natural. Someone might say, only take a breath through the corners and keep the mouthpiece right here. Well, that doesn't, if I have to go, that does not work for me well. So this is where eventually the student needs to find out what works for them. This is the value of experimentation. It deepens your awareness and puts a wedge into that which just wants to become unconscious robotic and voluntary. So asking yourself questions, well, what am I looking for? What are my goals? What do I want? <laughs> um, and how do I get what I want? That sincere inquiry. And you taking the time taking the time to find it is everything. And you say, I can't. I have a jury coming up at the end of the semester. I have to learn all this material. Welcome to the problems with our educational system. But before I give people an excuse <laughs> to use, why their improvement might not be as smooth and 
as speedy as they'd like, you need to look at, is your practice practical? Is it thought out? Are you regular? Or when the going gets tough, are you going to kind of collapse? And, oh, I don't want to do what I don't like. Well, then you won't improve. And it's a disservice in the name of you saying that you want something, but won't follow through with it. Now, when someone has a, a job, they might have more on the line that's going to keep them not taking too many things for granted. It's called money. <laughs> Security. Before that point, they had to do a lot of work to get that position. Now, for me, I'm not saying that getting a job is the pinnacle of artistic development. Okay? Um, they can go hand in hand, and sometimes one can eclipse the other. If your art is taking you in a different direction than what you thought your goal was, maybe you should listen to it. Maybe you should listen to it. But maybe also you need to give your chosen career a chance, okay, as well. This gets into interesting territory, even if you're going to look at it through the overlay system. Because just because you decided, I want this, depending on the core reason that you wanted it. Um, that and your aptitude and basic level of ability, raw ability, coupled with your work ethic to get there, Maybe something's trying to say this isn't for you. And before you use that as an excuse, give yourself a bit because if you love it, right, where does that love come from? Where does that love come from? It might come from the essence of yourself. It might be your soul saying, hey, you need to do this. Something else might have gotten to you. You might have been inspired by someone else. And what got into you was their inspiration and direction and determination to go after what they wanted that got into you, but not necessarily the field in which they pursued. And I've had many students that, you know, thanked me very much and said, I need to do something else. And some of them were getting really... There's no doubt they could have been a professional musician, for example, or and or an extremely fine artist. Hey, you got to do what you need to do, and sometimes it takes some time to find it. That's the value of serious, healthy, consistent, repetitive, adapting to what you need within that system so you can actually find what you want. Because just repetition, just I got to do this, I got to do this mechanically, I got to, that's not always going to give you results, especially if you're not using any real conscious, observant, you know, critique about what's going on. So I hope some of this is useful in looking at the living overlay system. And in this case, looking at it through born to be and do. And for the human being, that takes some work because we have the gift of choice. And I'm really happy, for example, I didn't choose to have a career as being a basketball player. Because even if I was really pretty talented at it, which I was not, I'm pretty short. 
And so maybe my function, even at the first overlay level, was different than being an actual basketball performer, player. Maybe I could have written articles on it. Maybe I could have been a sportscaster about it. So you might have your direction and I want to be a performer and it might take you into different directions that you can feel more natural with or maybe even do both. So, born to be and do is up to you to discover because the human being was born with that choice which is a freedom and a huge responsibility.